Humans of the Cardboard, welcome back to Just Nuts, guys. Today, we are looking at SP Little Knight in detail, a little more in-depth on this card. I did a review on this card uh, a week or two ago when it got released for Age of Overlord. Each card is insane. Um, I really believe that this may be one of the best Link 2s we've gotten definitely in a long time. Um, ever is hard to say because of stuff like Halky Fibrax and, you know... The, the Link 2s, the Verte and Aconda, those kinds of Link 2s that are like that, that are broken in their own way. But I think the the fact that this card does so much utility-wise as a super generically accessible Link 2 really makes it a, a really cool card that uh, I think is going to see a good amount of play uh, going forward. So we're going to go a little more in-depth on the card today. We're going to look at uh, the card, uh, most of its uh, applications and what I expect there. And then I have 10 decks that I think have a little bit of added bonus synergy with this card. Uh, a little leg up in that regard uh, than most decks will have, even though this card is so generic that... If you play a deck and you have an open spot in your deck, you probably just play this card unless you're literally playing a deck that doesn't go into the extra deck. That's really the only reason I could see of not trying to find room for this card, but it's insane. So let's start off by reading it real quick. If you do not remember what this card is, it is SP Little Knight, a Dark Warrior Link 2. It points to the left and to the right, so that's one downside to it is it doesn't point down, but it works around that pretty easily. It's got 1600 attack, which is actually not bad. That's actually potentially just high enough so that your opponent can't just normal summon and beat over it consistently depending on the decks you're playing against but that's kind of a nice bonus there here's what it does it takes any to affect monsters but if it's link summoned using any extra deck material fusion synchro exceed or link then you can target a card on the field or engrave banish it amazing also your monsters cannot attack directly for the rest of this turn that is a, a, a restriction for sure if you needed this to kind of go second to help break through a board you certainly are not otking and that's totally fine though because i think this card's removal effect is still doing plenty secondly when uh, has a second effect that's a quick effect when your opponent activates a card or effect you can target two face-up monsters on the field including at least one you control banish both monsters until the end phase a lot of times you're just going to be banishing itself in a monster your opponent controls as interruption that is just a bonus interruption on this card which is really nice because now not only does this like low-key just power creep stuff like the nightmares of the world uh like why make a phoenix or a cerberus discarding a card from hand losing an extra card from hand uh when this card banishes which is just a better form of removal anyway and then what you're left with is just a straight up interruption on your opponent's turn is it the best interruption in the world that quick effect no it, it can be worked around for sure um you know but it's something once you fire phoenix or cerberus they just sit there or you have to link up with them this card you don't have to do anything with it immediately gives you more value down the line longevity wise anyway so really really amazing card uh so here's the most important things to keep in mind starting off of course with ip masquerade because they're actually part of the same lore which is really cool so their designs kind of like make sense and kind of like have some you know similarities to each other uh but this card's really cool because i think it may just become the best ip masquerade target going forward uh, so IP already is a link, so when you quick link on your opponent's turn, you're using a link to make it, so it will get its banish effect on summon, and now you just get a quick banish, and then you get the quick effect. So it's actually kind of just like two interruptions on the opponent's turn, making IP just better, making um, the payoff for IP better, giving you more longevity down the line. Just really, really good, uh, for sure. So you definitely have to keep that in mind, is any deck that like is looking at end board options. This is really, really cool. And also any deck where like, oh, uh, I didn't really get anywhere. I didn't get far enough. I got hand trapped, whatever. Make IP with any other monster on the board. And you know what? That's something. If your opponent had to throw two hand traps at that and you're going to set up two interruptions anyway, that's definitely something to keep in mind. All right. Now we get to the generic side of things. This is something just to keep in mind. I think one of the other benefits of this card is that you can just make it fluidly in a lot of scenarios, just going second as you're playing into a board. And it's just better than the, the nightmares. So if you're able to just kind of like, uh, just, oh, I'm playing into a board, I get a couple monsters on the field and then to like keep breaking through the board, just make this card kind of smoothly. And then it can now tag out to dodge certain things. That's really annoying for your opponent to deal with kind of thing. Um, 
there's a lot of value there. So de like decks that kind of fit these link ones are going to have a lot of easy access into that. So any spellcaster deck has some easy access to this card. Uh, plant decks have a little bit of extra easy access to this card. Dragons, they have a link one. Of course they do. Uh, Cybers, they have Lingaribo. They also have Bane Links and a couple of other generic link ones, but Lingaribo gives them actual other utility. Um, and then you get to like the super generic ones. Any you know deck that has small normal summons, Almirage, Anima, and Link Rebo for just any deck that's a little bit heavier on Link Ones. Boom, Ex extra easy access to this card. Um, Link Spider, any deck that either plays with tokens or anything, uh, this makes it so uh, that just like the adventure engine just makes this card super easily. Not a problem there. Um, Claire and Rushka, um, this is another one. Like, take any normal summon post, uh, post, uh, I guess, in main phase two, and you're good to go. And then we get to the actual top 10 decks that I think have specific synergy. So, Sky Strikers, perfect, because you can just link up into this card going second to help break a board, and then it, it is in the extra monster zone, so it keeps that extra monster zone clear. When it uses its effect to tag out, it clears itself, um, and even if it comes back into the main monster zone, eventually it can just do it again whenever your opponent tries to activate anything, clearing your zones to make everything else live immediately once again. Uh, really good synergy, I think, with this deck. I think this card could be an absolute staple in Strikers. I know they're tight with extra deck space, but this one could be just good enough. Um, Vanquish Soul. I actually think Vanquish Soul has some good utility with this card. Um, if you can just straight up make this card with, like, Rock the Vanquisher on field, uh, or I'm sorry, if you can make IP Mask Arena while you have Rock uh, the Vanquisher on field, then, like, Rock is just getting you a bunch of resources added back to your hand, and then you're still able to just get, like, two interruptions from there. Or maybe Rock summons a monster uh, to your field, uh, so that way you can, like, have some of the Vanquish Soul interruptions, and then you're still able to IP um, into interruptions from there. It's just a super generic card. Vanquish Soul has a lot of open extra space. I think that makes a lot of sense. S-Force, I had to throw this one out there because it's still part of all this same lore. Um, and they have a Link 1. They have a Link 1 that actually has a quick effect, so kind of like in the same vein as as uh, Vanquish Soul. If you kind of can just make this card, you get like an extra monster summon back from uh, Banish. Um, to like help get more resources, more bodies on field, and then get the double interruption off of the Mascarena potentially. Still pretty good. Uh, Scareclaw. Scareclaw is a nice one, I think. Um, I think they have a little bit of extra space for sure uh, for some stuff to mess around with. So I think Lightheart's a pretty cool option for them. Or I'm sorry, uh, Little Knight's a pretty cool option because of Lightheart giving them super easy lines, like one card lines to get in there. Uh, Dark Infant at Ignister, uh, or just at Ignisters in general. Uh, what I like about this one is that you could like make SP Little Knight going second and then just like still use um, the field spell to just keep summoning from hand um, and go from there. Um, plus, uh, this is a cyber stack, so like you could still just make IP Masquerina as part of your end board and like. Uh, okay, you just still play SP Little Knight in the, in the extra to have that that as a form of interruption. It still works. I think it's decent. Uh, yeah, uh, trap tricks. I know they make a lot of exceeds, but like Sarah, is super easy to summon if you can just resolve the trap, the the new uh, Hol Holusha um, under Sarah. Then Sarah summons from deck. You're getting like a ton of value, and you're just able to push uh, with like SP Little Knight into boards. So that's pretty cool. They just have an easy to make link one. It makes sense. Magical Musketeer. I actually think this is a pretty nasty card for Muskets. Um, Muskets uh, at times in, in the past have been a hard going second deck. So the goal is like make max going second. It is a must negate. But if it resolves, you go crazy. And now it goes even crazier because like the whole point of max is like if you resolve to summon multiple Musketeers, you then just like link climbed into some nightmares, got some pops. Now you just have better nightmare, right? Um, and then it even offers you interruption on the opponent's turn if it's not killing your opponent in that same exact turn. So very, very cool value. I think there's definitely something uh, to go there, especially if um, like maybe Musketeer plus, oh, I didn't, even, that's my fault. Runic Musketeers, very, very cool. 
Uh, I did not put Runic on this list, but I might as well throw that out here now. Uh, because Runics just cheat out their fusion super, super easy, it gives you a super clean way to just like give half your material. Like it gets you the field spell, gets you that grind ability, and then you could just make SP Little Knight. I think this card's really good for Runic as well. Uh, moving on. I, is this the last one? Oh no, it's not the last one. Okay. Unchained. Uh, if you didn't know, and, I, and Unchained doesn't have a great link one to take advantage of, but if you didn't know all of the uh the effects of the unchains that link off with an opponent's special summon monster allow you to go into any generic dark link this card is a dark link uh, that's why sometimes you would even make a nightmare unicorn to shuffle a card but now you could just make sp little knight you don't have to discard lose that hand advantage but you get a banish instead of a shuffle and then you still have the second interruption effect so it's technically like three interruptions there that is a staple i think in unchained going forward at pearly beauty um or just uh, Pirelli in, in general, this is a deck that one monster gets you into your uh, Exceeds. Um, it's a really good utility removal card. I think it's just potent It's just like straight up better than Donner at this point for the deck, so they'll probably just replace Donner with it. Not surprising at all. I definitely expect that. And Zodiac is another one, like just a deck that has one cards, one single cards that get you access to either multiple bodies or uh, and at least like into an extra deck mechanic. So you can either threaten your opponent with Zeus, but if your opponent never even like like negates you, never lets you like attack directly or anything, you can still take that material into SP Little Knight and get some removal from that point forward. Uh, and of course, Runic. I didn't mention Runic. And there's probably some other fusion mechanics that I think, fusion decks that I didn't mention here that may have slipped my mind. I kind of just went with the ones that kind of stood out to me just off the top of my head of what uh, would make some really good sense with this card. But there you go. Um, just a little bit more in depth of, with this card. Uh, just want to get your kind of your brains going on this card. I really want to hear some of your guys' ideas. Yes, I know this card can probably just be abused by almost any deck in the game, but if you can think of any decks in particular that just have like a little bit of extra synergy, a little bit of extra ease of access to this card, um, I definitely think it's worth noting because those are that's what like is going to make this card stand out is like the decks that can like really really access it, not just oh technically i can make it reasonably easy like the decks that can make it super easy i think are going to have a little leg up from this card but uh yeah those are my thoughts on sp little knight it's an incredible card it's one of the best links generic links we've gotten in a minute uh but i'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this let me know your ideas on this card what you're brewing brainstorming down below in the comments i love you guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video subscribe if you haven't you want to see more discussions like this video i'll see you in the next one Peace.